evaluate the following integrals using a trig substitution. For my first definite integral, we're going to go from minus 3 to 0, dx over x squared plus 6x plus 18. Now if you note, this really doesn't look like anything we've done before. We're pretty much gone on faith, since we're in the inverse trig section, that an inverse trig substitution is going to make this work. So what we're gunning for is something of the form of either du over square root of 1 minus u squared. There's no square root here, so that's probably not it. Or du over 1 plus u squared. This doesn't look like that, but at least it's something plus x to a power. So we'll try to target that. So our big trick for this is to complete the square. So to complete the square of x squared plus 6x, to do that I take the 6, cut it in half, that'll turn into x plus 3 squared, and then I subtract off the 3 squared gives me a minus 9. So whatever winds up there, we square it, subtract it off. So we wind up with this. Now the minus 9 goes into the 18 to give me a 9 plus x plus 3 squared, and we're getting closer. So I want to target that 9 to get it to turn to a 1, and then I'll be able to start substituting. So I factor out a 1 9th from this. That's going to put my x plus 3 squared over 9, and then I could take that 9 where it is 3 squared, move it to the inside, giving me x plus 3 over 3 squared. This now looks great. I can get rid of what's in here by substituting it out. So I'll have u equal to x plus 3 over 3, which is x plus 3 plus 1, du is 1 third dx, or dx equals 3 du. I substitute, so we're going to put in 3 du here. That's going to cancel with one of the 3's that show up in the 9, leaving me with a 3, 1 third. And then in the bottom we just have 1 plus u squared. Everything is in u terms, so I might as well just go and put in u limits. So if I take u and put 0 in, I'm going to wind up with 0 plus 1 is 1. If I put minus 3 in here, I'm going to wind up getting 0 over 3, which is 0. So my new limits of integration are 1 and 0. Now, this you should probably memorize, or at least remember how to rederive it. I'll skip the rederiving for now. So the antiderivative of this function is going to be inverse tangent of u, and we bring in the 1 third. Okay, we're going to evaluate this at 1 and 0 and take the difference. So we've got to figure out what tan inverse of 1 is and what tan inverse of 0 is. If I write tan inverse of 1 equal to x, that's the same as saying tan of x is equal to 1. That's the same as saying sine of x over cosine x is equal to 1, or sine of x equals cosine x. Now, that's the y value in the unit circle. That's the x value in the unit circle. So I'm looking at where the unit circle hits the line y equals x. Well, that's going to hit at pi over 4. There we have y equals x. That's going to be the square root of 2 over 2 for both the sine and the cosine. So tan inverse of 1 is going to be equal to pi fourths. For tan inverse of 0, okay, we set that equal to x. Tan of x is equal to 0. We just rewrite it. Well, tan is equal to sine over cosine. So the cosine, I could just multiply over, clear the denominator, and that leaves me with sine of x equal to 0. Okay, well, sine is the y value on the unit circle. The way I get the height equal to 0 is being, by being at the angle 0 itself. So tan inverse of 0 is equal to 0. So we're looking at 1 thirds pi fourths minus 0, which is pi twelfths. Let's look at another definite integral, but this is more just to be careful with what we do. So the idea is, once you've got completing the square as a trick that you're using with your integrating, you want to use it whenever you see a quadratic. You shouldn't be so hasty, though, because we have other techniques. So let's take a look at this guy. So we're going to go from minus 3 to 0, 2x plus 6 over x squared plus 6x plus 18. So that looks a lot like this one, except I'm putting something in the numerator. If you notice, Okay, we could go straight to completing the square, but we should just slow down. The derivative of the bottom okay, is going to be equal to the top. The derivative of this is 2x plus 6. So I have a function's derivative over the function itself. 
that's a natural log problem. So let's see what happens here. Okay, I let u be equal to my quadratic. du is equal to the derivative of this with respect to x times dx. And so solving for dx is going to give me dx equals du over 2x plus 6. So I put that into the integral. We notice the 2x plus 6s are going to go away and leave me with du over u. Since this is entirely in terms of u, I'm going to put in the u limits. So I put in 0 for here, and I get 18. I put minus 3 in here, and I get 9. So we're looking at any derivative of 1 over u, and then we're going to evaluate that at 18 and 9, take the difference. Okay, the antiderivative of 1 over u is natural log. Okay, to be safe, you put absolute value of u. These are both positive numbers, so that won't hurt. So we're going to have natural log of 18 minus natural log of 9. And what's nice with natural log is if you take a difference, you can divide on the inside. So this becomes natural log of 18 over 9 or natural log of 2. So notice tan inverse doesn't show up in this problem because we have an f prime over an f. As a final escalation, let's put part A and part B together. So let's consider the definite integral from minus 3 to 0, 2x plus 8 dx, x squared, 6x plus 18. Now, I could try to substitute the bottom out. That'll give me my u. My du is 2x plus 6 dx, and that's not quite what we have in the top. But note we could still work with this. 2x plus 8 dx is going to be equal to du, 2x plus 6 dx, plus 2 dx. So we're still close. Let's see if we can make any use of this. Well, I substitute in for 2x plus 8 dx up here. And you notice the bottom we can represent in two ways. In one way, I can let it be equal to u. And we'll split that off where I have du over u. And then I can also split it off as 2dx over x squared plus 6x plus 18. If you notice, what I've done now is broken this definite integral up into two pieces where I already have my answers. So here's the idea. This u substitution lets me split the definite integral, and then I have to apply the technique that goes with each piece. So that would be part A and part B. So really, we're shortcutting a lot in this example because we've already done the work on the previous board. I already have the answer to this. That's your natural log of 2 from part B. I already have the answer to this. This is my pi over 12 from part A. The 2 in front hits that to give me pi 6, and so I have natural log of 2 plus pi 6.